Jennifer, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Like and share if you so desire. I really would appreciate it. It does help my channel grow. I am a narcissistic abuse survivor and I do talk about narcissistic abuse and I do talk about codependency and I am a supporter for people who are going through it. And so that is what my channel is about. I do recommend other channels if you want to get the psychology part of it. Uh, you know, I'm a survivor who's been with people like this, been around people like this my entire life. I, have, I guess I am a magnet for people like that, or I have been in my past, maybe not so much now, but definitely in my past. And so, um, I have experience in the way I know what it feels like. So tonight what I wanted to talk to you guys about is should you tell the next person who is in the relationship with the narcissist who they're with and what's going on and what they are to expect? So many times I hear this and I've been in this position before and it's like, wow, they have no idea what they're getting ready to get into. So I remember one time I was trying to tell someone, I was actually trying to save a relationship that I had and it was one that I was really invested in. And so I did this, I was like, you know, hey, you know, you may not know, but blah, 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 blah. And, um, you know, woman to woman, you know, I'm just trying to um, fight for my relationship. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, and it doesn't go the way you think it's going to go. <laughs> you know, because, you, you know, for me at that time, I was hoping like this person didn't know. And I just automatically assumed, you know, that, you know, girl power. And it's like, no, no. This person also knew, and it's not going to go the way you think. That person is just going to think you're crazy because the narcissist has already set you up to be the crazy person, and they know that there is the likelihood that this could happen or information may get out or you may say some things because you're, they know you're going to be mad. They've been through this before, and so they set the stage before it even happens. And that way, when it does happen, anybody, including the new source of supply, is going to think you're just crazy. And they're telling people that. Oh, she's just so crazy. She's so controlling. Um, they don't even sleep together anymore. They're not even sleeping in the same beds. That's if they're together and let's just say there's an affair. Or um, it's... they're. They're just saying, you know, you were just the most horrible girlfriend or wife or boyfriend or husband, whatever, um, ever on the planet. And you were abusive and you did this and you did that. And most of it is probably things that they did. You might have done some of it, but they have exaggerated it to the ninth degree and made you out to be all kinds of crazy because they don't want the two of you together. They don't want you anywhere near anybody that they're hanging out with. So they are definitely going to say and do things to make people not like you. They're going to tell everybody that you ever spoke to that you hated them and you talked bad about them and it was probably the vice versa and you were probably just taking up for, you know, your partner and being like, well, you know, I don't want to be friends with people that are like that. You know, it could be anything, but... For sure, the new supply thinks you are bat shit crazy. <laughs> and they um, don't like you and hate you and think you're this horribly mean, bad person. It's so psycho. It is so crazy when you see it happening. I've definitely seen this happen firsthand. And then they, their partner is acting crazy. And you're like, what are you doing? Like, I've never even met you before and you're acting crazy towards me. So it isn't gonna go the way you think. Don't even bother. Don't bother. It's best to mourn this relationship and um, get yourself together to move forward and better yourself. That is the best revenge that you could ever give a narcissist anyway. They don't want to see you do that. They need you to be dependent on them. 
And so for you to move forward and not need them anymore is something that, you know, they're, they're not going to like that. And so there you go. If you want revenge, do that. Don't be trying to tell the new source of supply. They're not going to believe you. And then for even if you were doing it just to save them and to keep them from harm's way, they're not going to believe you. They're going to have to experience it themselves and go through it themselves. And, you know, it's crazy because you will watch it play out. You will hear about it. You will see it. Um, they will be doing the same things and they will be trying to get this person back eventually themselves and doing all kinds of crazy things that they never thought that they would do either. And, um, and they've just been replaced <laughs> and don't like, it. I mean, I definitely hear these stories and even from my own personal experience, you do hear these stories or people will contact you or they will contact you and, you know, be crying to you. And what will you do when that happens? Will you be there to support them? Or will you distance yourself from it? It just depends on what's going on in with your life. The best thing you can do is to just get out of the chaos of it and not involve yourself at all. But I can promise you, you will, you will feel this way. And it is something that the narcissist is worried about. They definitely are worried about you messing with all of their sources of supply and uh, ripping the mask off of them. They do not want you to do that. That is something that they are so afraid of. And so they have to hate you. They have to talk bad about you. They have to make you this villain so that nobody listens to you. Nobody wants to get near you. They will tell you that, tell people she's crazy. Just stay away from her. You don't ever want to ever get involved with her, that kind of thing. Now, if you are not in devaluation and in a different part, then they may say different things about you. But trust you me, during this time, this is not when they are singing your praises, I promise you that they want everybody to stay away from you because you have a lot of information that you could give about them that they don't want people to know and they are frightened of that. They're not going to admit that, but they are on the inside. So that is why they try to turn people against you so that those people, when they see you, they go the opposite direction and they want nothing to do with you, including this source of supply. But eventually this source of supply may contact you. It has definitely happened for me before I have had um, plenty of sources of supply reach out to me out of curiosity, out of being sad, out of just trying to get answers, out of wanting to know if I was with their partner or not, um, or still talking to them, what the relationship is, because a narcissist does like to triangulate and eventually they may say nice things about you to um, their, their new source of supply when their supply is, and when that supply is in devaluation. So you will, um, where you once were like this crazy person, now you're not so crazy and they're talking different about you and that will confuse the new source of supply. So um, don't do it, don't waste your time. Don't even, you can sit there and dream up something. It is not gonna go the way that you want. I know you wanna do it. I know you're angry. I know you're sad. I know you're confused. You're not gonna get the answers that you want from them and it is not gonna go the way you want, and they are not, most likely those people are not going to believe you, they're not going to want to have anything to do with you, and then you're just falling into the trap of the smear where they go and tell people that you really are crazy. And um, the sad thing is, is that eventually if they do contact you, um, they're kind of backpedaling back a little bit, and they're apologizing to you. But really what they're doing then at that point is just trying to get information from you to um, put the pieces of the puzzle together for themselves and figure out what they're gonna do. And you know, because you went back so many times, it could be that they go back and you could be putting yourself in harm's way. It's really best to stay away from it on all fronts. These people, um, that get in relationships with the narcissist have to learn for themselves and figure it out for themselves and they have to do the work on themselves 
to get away from the relationship and move on and not get into relationships with other people like that. Most likely they are very much a lot like you in many, many ways. You may look different um, and you probably look a lot different, but there are going to be a lot of similarities in your personality because they are attracted to certain people. And depending on that type of narcissist, uh, will depend on who they're attracted to, but they're usually attracted to the same type of person. You may have different hobbies. You may look completely different, but there are going to be so many similarities and there are going to be things that a narcissist needs. You know, it could be that the narcissist has um, screwed their life up so much and their family up so much that they need you to make them look like they're a great family man. And so they take you on as a partner to, um, you know, make everybody think that they have this wonderful life and that they're actually a good role model and, uh, or to hurt the partner before them. Or it may be that, you know, they need you um, to support them, to help them move up the ladder or put them through school so that they can become something better. And like I was watching um, the new, uh, this this is what reminds me of this. I was watching the, I don't even know if it's really new. I cannot believe I hadn't seen it before, but I watched a few episodes of the Christian Slater um, Dirty John um, show because it was on the, I had seen the Lifetime movie before. I can't think of the lady's name, but now that Sturdy John is like doing different stories, I was like, man, I'd love to send my story in for that. But uh, I was actually thinking that. But uh, the I was watching it and I'm like, what was my point to that? That was, it, I'm so ADD, I swear. I always laugh at myself when I do these videos because honestly, they're so stinking real. Like I'm not like, <laughs> it is what it is when you get them, right? I swear. The Dirty John, so the Dirty John guy, this is, <laughs> see how you go whoop? Okay, I'm back. So the Dirty John guy, um, he married this girl that, and it was funny because it was like, it wasn't really funny, but when he, she was talking to him about herself when they first met and he was like, um, he said something like, yeah, you're perfect. You'll be perfect. And she was like, what? And he was like, you're, per yeah, you're perfect. You and what he meant was you'll be perfect for me because he needed what she was like. He needed her personality. She was like the cheerleader who was going to give him all the confidence that he needed to go forward to, um, she put him through, um, medical school and she worked like two and three jobs even when she was pregnant she was having all kinds of kids then she put him through law school because he didn't that was something he didn't want to do so then she put him through law school and she cheered him through every job where he got raises and you can do it you're better than you can start your own firm all the things that we do we do this for the people that we love we're their supporters we're like, you can do it. You can do it. You have it inside of you because they don't believe that they do and they need you to be that person that, you know, tells them that they can do it and cheers them on and helps them and pushes them and guides them and does all the hard work so that they get there. And then boom, they dump you. And this is what happened in this particular one. I haven't seen all the other ones, but I know it ends badly because I remember seeing the Lifetime movie and I was like, whoa, that like went really bad. But, um... So you might want to check it out. I don't know. It's the new Dirty John one with Christian Slater in it. I can tell you that. And I know that I watched it on YouTube, but I think it's on USA or it was. So um, anyway, I, I don't know all the other ones. I think there's like a bunch more that I haven't seen. And so maybe I should watch that tonight. But she did all of that and then he dumped her. And this happens. You hear of women that they're 60 years old and their husbands leave them and they, they leave them for somebody younger or just that, you know, because maybe they feel like they need somebody younger to make them feel better about themselves. And they think that everybody else thinks that makes them look good and that their friends are all jealous of them. And that's not necessarily true, but that's what they believe in their minds. And that's what they need to believe because they don't want to think of themselves as getting older. So if they're with somebody younger, it makes them feel like or appear like that they're not. But really, all it does is make them feel older. So don't you dare worry about it because they're watching, you know. 
and then that person's probably using them for whatever too. And so don't be jealous of stuff like that. Seriously, don't. You're going to find like this amazing person that wants to be with you and adores you and that you both like to do the same things and you end up being like the best friends and you're happy and you're having the life that you always envisioned. And I was listening to somebody today and I can't remember who it was. It might have been Dr. Romney. I'm not really sure who it was, but they were saying something along the lines. It could have, I'm not sure. I'm sorry if I'm saying the wrong name, but, um, they were talking about, you know, listen to the little girl. What is it that you used to dream of when you were little? And it's funny. I used to play this game. I don't know if you ever played it, but it was some kind of game and you would make the little house thing and you would write different things on it. And I, I remember I always put glass house. I always put glass house that I wanted to live in a glass house in the forest. And the reason is because I wanted to be able to see all the animals and I wanted to see the stars at night because I love twinkling lights. And I want, I just wanted to see all of that and basically like the universe. And so, you know, look up and see all the beauty that I believe God has um, created. And so I always said a glass house, but really what I always kind of envisioned was, even though I had that glass house, um, as I got older, I, I envisioned, like a lot of women do, you know, the house with the white picket fence. I still want that. And um, I envisioned having a front porch and a deck and neighbors that I could um, hang out with and talk to and be friendly with. That is something that I always wanted. And I did have some of that. And um, the neighbor thing I really, I really did like. But, you know, I, you can have those things. You just don't need to forget your dream. Don't forget it. You can have it. You know, I am, people say, well, why are you still single? Why are you single? Well, what's wrong with being single? I have always thought that was so weird that people think that there's something wrong with being single. I'm happy single right now. I don't have any problems of a narcissist telling me what to do. I don't have them, you know, saying nasty comments to me. Um, I don't have them having all these horrible expectations of me when I come in after a long, hard day's work or coming in after I've cleaned a house for eight hours trying to be perfect and then them coming in and walking the perimeter of the house to find the one thing that I forgot and give me hell about that and not thank me for the eight hours that I cleaned and actually fixed them a beautiful meal and then talk bad about that too or how I didn't help with this, that, and the other. I don't have that anymore. I have peace in my life. I have joy in my life. I have time now to spend with my family, real time, that I can actually spend time with them without the stresses of something like that, where I'm actually connecting with my family. I, I have so much to be thankful for. I go to bed at night and I don't have those stresses. I used to have night terrors where I was jumping up in the middle of the night screaming. I had night terrors for a really long time and on occasion I still have them and that's CPTSD and I will probably mention that all the time. So if that's something that you might wanna look up because you may have something like that or major anxiety, we do have triggers and, and it's post, I mean postpartum, post-traumatic stress disorder, and it is um, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, and it is something that you might want to check out. You may have that, and the narcissist will probably call you all kinds of names like bipolar and stuff, but really, it is probably CPTSD. So, yeah, I mean, um, I don't have any of that stuff anymore, and that's what you have to look forward to if you just walk away from this toxic relationship that you've been in, it is toxic and you would just repeat the pattern again and again and again with this person. Let this person move on. They're going to move on and they're going to repeat that same pattern because narcissistic people don't go out and really seek help. They may say they're going to, but they don't stick it out, unfortunately. I'd like to see one do that and um, see how that goes. They can do it. They they have the opportunities to do it, but they usually don't wanna do the hard work. And um, so you go and you do the hard work and you get that life that you really want. 
Don't let fear hold you back. The narcissists in your life, maybe even since childhood, so you may have been conditioned this way to believe that you're not good enough, that you can't do things, but you can do anything that you wanna do. Anything that you put your mind to, I promise you, you can do. Even if you are, you know, somebody said, you know, I'm 56 or something like that. Even if you're in your 50s, you know what? If you've never even worked and you've raised kids and you don't have, you can still have a career. You find what it is that you love. Write a book, you know, start your own company. Do an, start out small, do an Etsy store. If you're, you know, artsy and you can do arts, you, if you are smart and you did well in school, maybe you could be a tutor. You can support yourself. You can do some things. Don't let someone think that you cannot do it because I promise you, you can. You can. Anyway, so that's from me. Don't go to the new girlfriend or the new boyfriend and tell them anything. They got to figure out on figure it out on their own. Say a little prayer for them. Got to tell you, I said some prayers for some chicks that I literally was so hurt by. I felt so hurt and it wasn't their fault. I was mad at them in the beginning. You know, they were calling me names and they were treating me a certain way and saying horrible things about me and, you know, but they were manipulated. They were tricked and um, eventually I found a way to pray for them. I really did. And people were like, I can't believe you're like saying that and saying nice things about them now. And I'm like, well, you know, I just know now what um, happened. And so I know what's gonna happen to them and it could be worse. So thank your lucky stars that you're not in that anymore. And you know what, I promise you, it doesn't feel like it now because you're missing them and um, that's that trauma bond. But um, you will look at that person one day and be like, what the heck was I thinking? Why was I ever with them? I promise you, you will do that. You'll be like, oh my gosh. And you know, I really loved these people, but I'm telling you, there'll be times that you'll be like, why did I ever even stay with somebody like that? Like, why didn't I, when I left the first time, stay gone? I'm so much better than that. And it, seriously, you, you deserve so much better than that. And that is not you being narcissistic, but it is you um, grabbing some of the narcissistic traits that you probably should grab a hold of and, um, and be healthy and say, you know what? I deserve to have the life that I, you know, that I want to have and I can go out and I can do it and I don't have to let fear hold me back. Fear is like the devil pulling the chain and pulling you backwards time and time and time again. You pull hard and you pull yourself forward and you get those angel wings and you flap those wings as hard as you can or you wrap them tight around you to protect you and you get yourself healed and better and I promise you, you'll look back on your life and be like, wow. And you will see exactly how strong you are because people who make it through narcissistic abuse, I can promise you, are probably some of the strongest people you will ever meet. All right, so until next time, love you, bye.